So now we're going to trans, uh, transfer our ideas into number theory and start talking about number theory and real numbers. So in number theory, we're really talking about the theory that relates to numbers, prime, composite, um, factoring, methodologies. And so if I were to start classifying numbers, numbers where I can count objects are called counting numbers or natural numbers because they naturally occur. One and a half is not a number I can count on my fingers, so I can't use one and a half as an example of a natural number. And so studying all of these properties is how we found the study of number theory. Um, an interesting question you can ask yourself as you go through this is what counting numbers can I find as the product of other numbers and which can I not use? And so as we start to consider the properties of numbers, it becomes interesting to find out how these operations happen with these certain numbers and what the answers wind up being and if there's patterns in that. So prime numbers are any numbers whose factors are itself and one. So one is not a prime number because it does not have two factors. One and one are its factors, not two distinct numbers. Um, there's also some additional information that's been put in here about how to work with um, symbols. So when we say A divided by B, there's a natural thought of A over B or A division symbol B. And there are different ways of quantifying this and looking at how we function with our symbols. So five with the horizontal bar, then 30 means five divides 30. When I say five divides 30, it's because I know that five times six is 30. So I'm really thinking about what is 30 divided by five. When we write natural numbers as the product of two natural numbers, we say that it's factored. So two times three is six. So two and three would be my factors. And then we can say, well, if they're factors, then the end number six is divisible by two and three. That's our natural assumption. Any natural number greater than one that has only itself and one as a factor is considered prime. Everybody else is composite. And so the sieve of Aristoteles is a me method for generating this list of prime numbers. It's how do we actually find out what are the prime numbers? So this list is all of the prime, prime numbers that are there that are less than 50. So I write out all of my digits from one to 50. Then I'm gonna systematically cross off all of our non-primes. So one is not prime, so I cross it off. Two is going to be prime, so I'm gonna circle it or draw a square. And then I'm going to mark out any multiples of two. Any multiple of two is going to be composite. I'm going to do the same thing and say, well, three is prime. So I'm going to cut out all the multiples of three because by definition, if it's a multiple of three, it is divisible by three. I'm going to do the same thing with five. I'm going to do the same thing with seven, who's also prime. And then what I'm left with is going to be all of the prime numbers that have not been crossed out. So this is really just thinking about it as a system of elimination. If I wanna determine if 83 is prime, I only need to divide by the numbers up to 10 because I should be able to get there by dividing by other numbers. So I don't necessarily need to check if any composites divide into 83 because we don't need to check into anything who's greater than 10. I only need to worry about 10. So if it's divisible by two, three, five, or seven, my first prime, then it would give me a different answer. But because it's not divisible by those, then it's also going to be a prime number. So you can use the prime numbers that you know from one to uh, seven to divide to determine if anyone else is a prime. You could also know by knowing the divisibility rules. So this is a great slide to take a screenshot of, copy it down for later, it walks you through divisibility. And so those are really just shortcuts to identifying if something is prime or composite. 
So if I look at the number 11,352 and I want to know, is it divisible by 6? Based on this table, I need to see if the number is divisible by both 2 and 3. So I'm going to give that a try and check it and see if it's divisible by 3. It is. Well, is it divisible by 2? It is, so therefore it is divisible by 6 as well. If I'm going to apply these rules of divisibility, the whole purpose is so that I can get factors figured out. So an example of this would be factoring out 4,620 and trying to find all of the factors until we get prime numbers. So our easy division here is 10, so I can say that that's 462 times 10. And I can continue going with my factor tree and I know that I'm done when I get to a prime number. So all those red numbers on the right hand side, those are prime numbers and so that's how I know to go ahead and stop. If I multiplied all the numbers in my factor tree together, I would still arrive at my original number. Now something that can often get slightly mixed up would be looking at um, the divisors and looking at prime factorizations to find the greatest common divisor and the least common multiple. And so the greatest common divisor of two natural numbers is the largest natural number that divides both numbers. So it's the greatest factor that they have in common. And so to find that, I would need to factor both numbers and then identify what is the largest one that both of them has in common. And so if I get it all the way down to the prime factorization, I take all of the numbers they have in common and then I multiply those together, and so the greatest common divisor would be the product of the two twos they had in common when they factored, the three they had in common, and then the five they have in common. Here, we also have the alternative method, where I'm also able to do this by looking at prime factorizations and then using powers. So all this means is instead of showing two times two times two, I'm doing two to the third. It's the exact same thing. If you have a calculator, just use the twos and the multiplication of the twos. Don't stress yourself out trying to work on divisors. If I'm looking to solve problems that involve the greatest common divisor, I'm going to need to figure out how to look at it from the perspective of the two largest numbers that it has in common. And the word greatest really means largest natural number that goes into both of them. And so when I'm working to identify that, I'm going to use a slightly different strategy because powers are gonna be slightly easier to organize my information. If I'm looking for the least common multiple, that is the smallest number that is a multiple of both numbers. So if I look at this, and I look at the smallest numbers that it has in common, 600 requires three twos and two fives. 540 requires three threes. And so if I look at this and I take all of the factors and I put them together in their largest quantity, so I have two times two times two, that's the most twos multiplied, I have three times three times three, that's the most threes multiplied between both numbers, and five and five. So my least common multiple is actually gonna be 5,400, and it would have taken you a long time to keep doubling those numbers to find where that multiple was at. Here's the alternative method, which I think is, again, with exponents, it's slightly tricky. It's not a great answer for this. Um, but here are some steps you can screenshot to use when looking for the greatest common divisors and the least common multiple. So this is going to help you kind of suss out what are those differences in step form. And so if I want to actually visualize 600 and 540 and look at this as grouping similar objects together, that's how I can utilize it from a visual perspective.